It's the unofficial 40 from Soonerscoop.com. Presented by the Choctaw Casino and Resort in Durant. Now, here's the entire Sooner Scoop crew. Carrie, Josh, Eddie, and Bob. All right, that, that sound is what uh, Lincoln Riley, that, that music just... It follows him all the, all around these days now. It's just epic, dramatic music following Lincoln Riley as he signs defensive recruit after defensive recruit, even without a defensive coordinator. Welcome to the Unofficial 40, brought to you by Choctaw Casinos in Durant. I uh, want to remind you guys, uh, they make this all possible. They make this thing go. Uh, go check them out, ChoctawCasinos.com. If uh, you're just out there looking for a, a great weekend adventure, uh, there's no better place to go check out in the state if you're from the Dallas area, if you're from Oklahoma City. Uh, it, I'm, I was thinking about this the other day because I was driving by the Mega Casino uh, on I-35, and I've been out there too. Um, nothing against those fine folks. But the, the Choctaw Casino is so convenient. Like, you stay in the hotel, and you get down. You're right in the heart of the casino. You're not, like, walking seven miles uh, their their vi- music venue is fantastic. There's not a better casino. I can't believe anybody would have a better music venue uh, than what uh, Choctaw Casino and Durant has. Uh, it's uh, 2019 is poker season out there. Go check out the poker room. I uh, got the World Series of Poker uh, events going on uh, coming up here in uh, January. Uh, and uh, so go ChoctawCasinos.com. Check that out. But great restaurants. Uh, they got the district, which is the, the, the fun center, the bowling and the movies and, uh, sports bar and all that stuff. But Gillies, uh, the 1832 Steakhouse, uh, Butterfield's Buffet, uh, La Cantina. Uh, if you just want some Papa John's, they got pizza in there. So, uh, go check them out. Thanks for the sponsorship, uh, making this all possible. All right. This is going to we- be a, this could be a podcast where I don't think I have to say a whole lot. Can I say something real quick? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Did you say that they're going to have World Series of Poker out there? Yeah. Or are we going to sponsor a? Uh, we should sponsor a player and then take like screw that thirty percent of their winnings. I'm I'm going. Well, go play. It. No, no, we want money, Kerry. I'm good at poker. This we is, want to bet on a horse that got a chance to win. This is how we're going to the national championship. The, oh, I like that. I, if we could bet on a good player, I think it's a better bet than Oklahoma well, to run straight up. I can either play poker or I can go to the national championship. It kind of coincides with one another. I think another. you should do both. I think you should bet on the Orange Bowl, then go to the national championship, <laughs> then come back and play in the World Series of Poker. Lose all that money. That's and not, ben, I mean, you can't. Eddie will help them play the Scared money don't make none. By the way, we are three days, as we're recording this podcast on a Thursday, Three days from the team landing in Fort Lauderdale. It's crazy. Uh, this I this this um, schedule that that we're on now. It's been nuts. It's madness, and it. I think it's good, and everybody seems to like it. And Lincoln was asked about this yesterday. Do you like the schedule? It's like I don't think he's been able to come up for air since the end of the season because he had you had the Home Depot awards, and then you had the Heisman, and then he had to go do all his in homes. Then he comes back, and they're practicing a little bit. Uh, and then you have signing day, and you saw like the video yesterday where they were celebrating when Cradell selected the uh, OU on ESPN two. But and now three, you, you're three days from going out there. And I'm sure, I'm sure they're going to be relieved to finally get out there. But let's talk about what we're here to talk about, and that is uh, National Signing Day because Sooners end up signing twenty two. I'll air quote that twenty two because we there possibly is someone more, but. I'll just throw it. I mean, Josh, Bob, this is your podcast. You have never needed to shine more than you do now. That's pressure, Josh. Hold on. You know who's hold on, Crimson. Get your lotion out. Get your lotion out. Here we go. I would say this is more Big Crimson TX's podcast. Let's be real about it. You know, this this is this is our little tribute to him. I bet even Diamond Dave likes will like this podcast. (laughs) Eddie, (laughs) pipe down over there. Just sit over in the corner, Eddie. Don't say anything. That's cool. (laughs) <laughs> no, don't do uh, that. Don't ruin the podcast. <laughs> so true. We don't need a lot of Josh. Uh, no, I, I don't know. I mean, I'd love to hear Bob's take on it. But for me, I don't know that OU could have done anything more than they did yesterday. That was a home run of a day. Closed on Cradell, closed on Stripling. Um, 
I, I think the Ty Armand signing, and I'm sure we'll get into that a little bit, uh, you know, with a more focus as we go forward here. But I think it's a good signing. I think it's one of those guys that maybe at times OU has gone away from in the last few years, where he's a guy that's a little more substance than style. It's not he's not six foot three and you know walks into a room and blows you away. I've seen Ty Armand in person, and he's not a guy that blows you away, but. Every time you watch him, all the dude does is make plays. I mean, he's a good, good football player. It does and not appear that if someone accidentally throws a football up in the air right to him that he's going to miss it. Yeah, th- there's no nothing's going to— He may know, not like, be a five-star, but uh, he probably won't drop as many passes as Buki did this year. I, you know, and that's the thing. Like I, I, The comparison I made in a couple of the articles, I've he kind of reminds me of Stephen Parker in that way that Parker— and I know I had some people like, oh, that's you know that, that's not as exciting as we want it to be. People don't remember Stephen Parker in high school. He was everything for Jakes. I mean, he he won in the state that, championship. His senior yeah, year. I should say that yep. that senior year, Eddie, Bob, and I were all there on the sideline talking to each other, and he literally just willed Jinx to that state championship that night. When you look at Ty and Cradell, you can see that OU decided it's time to get physical in the secondary. As much as we love Justin Broyles, Mbuki, guys of that nature, we got to start to get tough again. I thought Wednesday was a real nice step in going in that direction. I I think you're absolutely right. I mean, that you watch, there's two clips. And I can, I've watched them so many times since yesterday afternoon when the DeArm and stuff started to break. Watch the first clip of his of his big reel that he has. That kid may still be in the hospital. Like he just destroys that poor kid. And then at the forty five second mark, he literally may have concussed a guy while he had the ball. He's carrying the ball. He takes a little swing pass. He goes outside, and the you can tell the DB thinks he's just going to lower the boom. And Diarman, when he could have stepped out of bounds, he gets upfield and lowers his shoulder into the kid. And the kid looks okay for a second, and he starts to stand up, and then he just falls back down to the ground. Like, I mean, he had, uh, like I said, I mean, that's the kind of guy that can make a play that gets your defense going. You know, we're, we're, he's going to pop a ball loose or just make a big play that gets the crowd into it. Those kind of guys, I mean, uh, I, I don't think you want a secondary full of tidy Armands because y- you need those rangy athletic guys too, and I get that. But he is kind of the guy that could come in and set a tone in the right situation. You know, I, I think yesterday it was... Um, well, n- doing a lot for the Whites as well. Yes. Mm-hmm. He's a white guy. Carrying on the Matt McCoy. Uh, let's see. Matt McCoy, That's Brett it. Bowers. That's it. No, <laughs> Brett Bowers. You can't mention him. No. <laughs> You're going to start a, a board war all over again. I knew the board had peaked yesterday. I knew that things were going very well. when the One of the first comments that I saw was, you know, he reminds me of... Pat, Pat Tillman. <laughs> like, yes, oh, oh, this oh, thing has peaked. This Jim, is awesome. Uh, it has to be. It's. I mean, like, that's, that's amazing. Like you the, should be. You should re- receive a racial diversity award, Josh, because you brought up Stephen Parker as a comparison I, and not a tired white guy. I saw a lot of Jim Leonard from Wisconsin too. Oh, God, <laughs> you can only you compare guys, him but, to white guys. That's all you can compare. Him it's to. like the. Uh, it's like an inside <laughs> slot receiver. It's that's Wes Welker. <laughs> That's the next Wes Welker or the next well, Danny Amendola. Well, it used Amendola. to be White, and then it became Wes Welker. So, um, you know, the the funny thing about it is, and I'll own this about myself, I'm an overcorrector. So, like, even if I'm like, that dude looks just like this other white guy, I'm like, Mm-mm, nope, I'm going to find a black dude that reminds me of him. I'm not going to do the white guy thing. You like, couldn't I even, not, I mean. I'm like, I will not be pigeonholed. I will not be this guy. So Did no one I, even go, like, light-skinned black guy? Like, I was thinking, who's the, <laughs> like, <laughs> I was thinking, like, uh, well, you know what? Who is the the running back for Saint, the Chargers right now? Because he looks almost white, but he's just uh, a light skinned. Melvin Gordon. Like, no, 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 no. The no, guy that's no. playing oh, the guy that's actually him. playing right now. Yeah. Oh. It's like, uh. it's like, like, it's not girly, but it's kind of like that name. It's like, I don't know. I don't know either. Um. Anyway, no, I was thinking of who is the Bonnie, the the DB that was at Texas that. John Bonney. John had the Bonnie. Hair. Yeah. Graduate yeah. transfer to Tech. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, if, if if he can be, look, I'm not, nobody's sitting here saying, okay, well, he's going to be, but if you have, it's like we always say, there's no competition at the safety position. I mean, that's, that's one of the worst things that you can have is to not have competition at a position. Like, 
as the cornerback position has gotten more guys that have been able to play and just haven't sucked. Like when Jordan Thomas was there sucking and you just had a bunch of young guys that hadn't played. I mean, they were really good when they came in and they played, you know, Parnell Motley played really good and then Trey Norwood played really good. But it was like this year as they realized that they were the guys and nobody was really threatening them, everybody kind of fell down a little bit. I mean, and safety just hasn't had that at all. I mean, they've just, they've had nobody to compete against each other. I mean, basically Khalil Hutton became the starter by default at that position. Right. Let's try to do a timeline here, Josh. So we're looking at Jordan Battle and when that doesn't go go down, do they just immediately go to Ty? I'm hoping to speak to Ty either this afternoon or this evening to get the full run uh rundown of how er- how everything came together on his end. But have you heard anything on your end about like how quickly this all went down in like a 24-hour period? You know, I can say, and it makes a lot of sense, Bob, because I've heard more about it from the Jordan Battle side as far as what was going on there. I know, um, and and I posted some notes, uh, I can't remember when, over the weekend. But basically what I was told is that last Wednesday, Jordan Battle called uh, called Ohio State and Oklahoma and said, actually I think it was Ohio State, and said, I'm decommitting, I'm going to go to Alabama. Okay. Ohio State's like, no, no, we're... Like, let us come in home, let us try and, you know, make this right, blah, blah, blah. So they come down, do the in-home basketball game, that sort of thing. Basically, since fr- everyone thought he was going to change his commitment on Friday, well, nothing happens. Well, Alabama doesn't know why, Ohio State doesn't know why, Oklahoma doesn't know why. There was, like, he just went radio silent on everybody. And so my guess is that by Saturday or Sunday, Oklahoma kind of knew like whether it's Alabama or Ohio State's irrelevant to us it's not going to be us so I I think they just kind of said okay we need to come up with a new plan and they started moving forward now I will say to their credit and I've said this about Kerry Cooks for a long time he is very very good about having a plan B ready at all times and I think that's what this was is that okay we're not going to get Jordan Battle who's my next guy and he had stayed in contact he both he and Chip Viney there had been a, you know, maybe not a strong relationship, but there had been a, we can check in on you every other week or from time to time and just see how things are going. And so when Oklahoma knew that they were out, they could kind of jump and pounce on DeArmond. And I think that's probably what they spent most of the morning Wednesday doing was trying to close that deal and get him there. And DeArmond's already visited, so there wasn't a, you know, it wasn't a deal where just, you know, choose us blind. But And I will say one other thing is I know a lot of people had a question of, well, could this have waited till February? No. He was going to sign with Arizona State yesterday if Oklahoma didn't make him the offer and give him the ability to sign yesterday. So this was a, you know, uh, kind of do, you know, I guess a shit or get off the pot kind of moment. Like they had to make a choice one way or another. Right. And, and for those that don't know, Ty visited for junior day. So, yeah, back again, in February. Exactly. It wasn't mm-hmm. like he just came completely out, out of the blue. I will admit – when he committed to the Sun Sun Devils, I kind of moved away because I figured, okay, he's set there. I don't know if OU would ever work its way back to him. It just happened to turn out that way. Well, and you got to remember back in those days, Bob, I mean, like, that's that's the thing with the recruiting. It's so hard because it looked like at that point Oklahoma was probably going to get Chris Steele. Like, I mean, that's what it felt like way back then. And so you were like, well, they're, you know, they're getting guys like Chris Steele and they got Jaden Davis coming in and Woody Washington looks great. And, you know, Jamal Morris is, you know, I like the, uh, it, it looked like, well, why would they get this guy? Because a, they're getting higher, more highly rated guys that they've already offered. And there's only so much space. So it just seemed obvious. Now, looking back, you're like, well, you know, maybe I gave up on that too soon. But it, it, like I said, recruiting is so fluid. That's why. People, that's why I, I, you know, shameless plug. That's why you need to be a member on the site because stuff changes so fast. As soon as you think you can count on something, it moves again. By the way, uh, if you're listening to this early or late after early after it's posted, we still do have our 99 Cyber Special going on, which we are all getting ready to head out to uh, Miami, and we're going to have a ton of coverage out there that uh, you won't be able to get unless you're a subscriber. So. Uh, if you're a big listener of the pod, we'll give you 99 bucks in uh, our fan store, which is the same thing that the university's fan stores. It's all run by Fanatics. And uh, you can get Jordan brand stuff. You can get bowl gear, uh, all that. So you can get Big 12 championship gears or hats or whatever you want. 
and then you just pay 99 bucks for a one-year subscription. So it's basically a free year subscription. So make sure you get signed up for that because that deal's going away. Literally, I would say within 48 hours of when this posts, that deal won't be around anymore. Yeah. Well, and also, you know, just as to continue, like, the stuff that we're going to have that nobody else is going to have, obviously with Eddie, Kerry, and Bob, we'll have three guys on the ground in Florida, which I don't think anybody else is going to have. And then myself, I'll be in Orlando covering the Under Armour All-American game, come home and then spend all week in San Antonio covering that, where Jaden Hazelwood should be announcing a decision, which may be of considerable note to Oklahoma fans. So <laughs> there are a lot of things to talk about uh, from both recruiting and team in the next just two weeks that would make basically your annual membership worth the price of admission, basically. Okay, so let me, let me, let's talk about Jaden Hazelwood. Um, and this... Uh, the way things kind of went down, I'd love for you guys to kind of talk about it too. Um, when you started hearing things, uh, not just on Hazelwood, but everybody that kind of finished out this class, I would. I mean, I my read is, Josh, you you knew about Stripling probably before anybody else that signed on that final day, or possibly signed on that final day. I think that's pretty fair. I, and we did a video interview, and we'll have it, Eddie. I know it's working on it, where he and I kind of talked about. It. He told. Lincoln Riley during their in-home uh, last week. So, I mean, that that was, you know, if, if you knew the right people to talk to and you could kind of sort it out, yeah, that that had already happened. It was kind of in the bag. And then I, I had heard, like, I think it was Thursday. Or, yeah, it would have been Thursday. I was going to go down to uh, Marcel Brooks signing. And so I went to go buy some camera gear that we needed if I was going to go down there. And on the way there, he yeah, announces mo- Monday or or was that Monday? Monday, Monday, Monday. My days are all screwed up. <laughs> um, I'm thinking like today's Friday for some reason. No, this was Tuesday. Tuesday, guys. Tuesday. Was so it was before. Tuesday. Yeah. It was Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. The day before science. The so day before. he does his. I'm one trillion billion percent committed to LSU. I don't know how many zeros were in that thing. I started looking at that and I was like, <laughs> I don't know what this number <laughs> That's is. Not a number. I'm not. I'm not going to even put this into my computer into my Google search. Started doing your Austin Powers voice. <laughs> One million dollars. <laughs> dollars. Yeah, no, that was. And then, yeah, that it was w- good. Uh, I would just think, like, you know, Ed Orgeron would have popped out of the corner and been like, "Stop the ball! Stop the three! <laughs> How great was I'm that? Out of the Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I like. I like the very first part of that. You can faintly hear a guy go. That means shut up. Yeah, no, that's at the very end. Yeah, the the first one. Here's 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 the first one. In Louisiana, hold on a second. Hey guys, hey guys, hey, I'm having a press conference. Okay, thank you. <laughs> you know what's am- the, the so two good. things that are amazing about that is one. He walks up and doesn't even like, oh, sorry about that. Doesn't, you know, like there's literally just keep, <laughs> just keep just going. Like, it never stops. I've never and, seen an SID be that aggressive before. That's awesome. Oh, is that who said it? No, is no, that no. Who said no, 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 no. Well, I mean, to stop a press conference to go yell at someone that's making noise. Oh, yeah. Oh, like yeah. you say you wish an SID would do that. I got you. I've yeah. yelled at people before to shut up. The second that happened part, a couple and- weeks ago, right? <laughs> no, it was about a month ago. Yeah. Carrie, I want you to know that this. It literally Bailey. made me think of you because it gave credence to something you've told me forever. Like, I remember when we first started doing the pod, you'd be like, and Josh is back in his studio. And I'm like, yeah, I'm sitting in my living room, you know, like, just hanging out. You're like, don't go behind the, you know, like, don't, like, don't let him behind the it, curtain. Yeah. When yeah, you see how bad leader. it looks, video, it looks like he's in a press conference room. But he's not. Like, you don't think anything of it. And then he walks off and you're like, oh, damn, they're just in the middle of his facility. Like, that's like, they're indoor. They're yeah. the whole image. Yeah. It, so. it, it threw me off, uh, I guess, like, not, like, knowing, like, once I went through journalism school and stuff and started going to press conferences, it really kind of messed with me where press conferences are held. I think I had this, like, image that it was, like, this special room or something. Grand And then room. to find out that it's, like, just a, a backdrop standing in front of a backdrop pretty much and... Yeah, in very weird places. <laughs> they yeah. put, they put they like, you in the shed. Go ahead. It kind of fucked <laughs> with me for a while. That I mean, that's kind of like you know when you go to bowl games, uh, you're always like doing something in the stadium, like yeah, and that's they just have different backdrops yeah. set up in different places. So yeah, it's I don't know. Rant over. 
<laughs> okay, there you go. But no, anyway, so I was going when or Monday, Tuesday, 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 Tuesday afternoon to go grab, it. and then I found okay, Marcel Brooks is thousand, but I'm not going to that guy's thing now, so I'm done. I'm not going to Dallas. And on the way there, it was forcing me to kind of call some people, and that's when I'd kind of heard like, um, OU, like their broadcast department is preparing to talk about Cordell and Hazelwood possibly tomorrow. And I let you guys know, and you started checking more into And I think before at that point, you'd already, hadn't you guys already kind of gotten a feeling that Cordell could, is, is a real strong possibility for OU? Yeah, it looked a lot better than I thought on Saturday and Sunday. Because, man, there was so many, it's not the Oregon writers, it's West, West Coast people are saying, you know what, I, I think he's going back to the Ducks. But, by Tuesday, that narrative had changed. Now, Josh, he stuck with it the entire time, so he looked like a genius with this one. But, yeah, by Tuesday afternoon, I felt like Jeremiah was a much more sure bet. Yeah, absolutely zero humble. I stuck with Cordell in Oklahoma. You know, I, I sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. I, 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 there were times when I was like, Ooh, I don't like what I'm hearing here. But, I, you know, to give credit, it, I really I had a lot of conversations with Adam Gorney, who is our West Coast guy, really knows. Obviously, anytime you're going to cover the West Coast, you got to know matter, modern day really well, and he's familiar over there. And um, he was he just stayed confident. I, I kind of talked to him. He said, yeah, you know, I think Oregon made an impression, but I, I still think it's Oklahoma. And his feeling, which was kind of interesting, is he had gotten the impression that Oklahoma – had presented the idea of kind of a cornerback, nickel, you know, kind of a hybrid guy to Cradell, where Oregon was telling him safety, just right. flat out safety. But to hear Lincoln talk about it, he was talking about Cradell like a safety. Yep. So I don't know how to get, like, I don't know if that's an agenda that Oregon was trying to put out there. Oh, they're just telling him that and they're going to flip him, you know, because I mean, if Lincoln was trying to hide it, I don't think he'd say it out loud in the press conference. So, like I said, I don't know what to make of that, but I mean, regardless, it, it's a huge win for Oklahoma. I mean, Cradell is a big time guy. To forget what it means moving forward with Elias Ricks and all the other guys at Modern Day, you know, Oklahoma, I think, made two or three new offers just last week at Modern Day. That's a juggernaut program that if Oklahoma can even get 20% of the guys they offer there, they're going to be doing really well. Well, and then on top of that, uh, it was interesting because. Uh, was it Rob Cassidy that wrote the article about Hazelwood um, about his, with quoting his coach saying he was down to Miami and Georgia? I don't. I think it was a Miami based writer. Was it okay that who had the contact with Jaden's coach and his coach had okay. inferred that OU was out of it? Yes. Yeah, they, I mean, and and so I think we all kind of read that. And we're like, okay, well, finally, maybe this thing's put to bed. And it seemed like almost immediately after that article yeah, came like out, a couple hours, boom. We just kept started hearing all these little things that made us kind of be like, "Are we sure OU's out of this?" Like, I don't know. And then you know, I'd kind of heard like some of that stuff about you know inside internally. I mean, people were talking about Hazelwood possibly being a guy that would be announced. On signing day. Yeah, I, I apologize about the basketball coverage on Tuesday night. I was knee deep in recruiting. I yeah. barely watched any of that game until like the second half. I had a lot of people wonder why we didn't have a <laughs> bunch of Creighton coverage. <laughs> <laughs> it was a huge win, Bob. Ten and one now. Brady Mannix is a star. Chris and James is a star for sure. Well, and when Creighton comes to town, I thought he had a crappy night. He didn't play very well. In I mean, he had what thirteen points Tuesday or something, night. but yeah. he didn't he didn't stand out. That oh, was the no. first game where I really watched him. I was kind of like, "Well, you're not doing too well, Christian." I only played four. Uh, only played yeah, fourteen minutes. Trouble early too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Four, thirteen points and fourteen. Richard minutes. Odoms is getting better and better though. See, it's kind of the opposite. Like he hasn't played that well yeah, this yeah. season. That might he be. He played well on Tuesday night. Game. Yeah. And that's okay. your basketball coverage. That's your basketball. Well, the ball, they yeah. played Northwestern Friday night. Okay, go. Brought to you by. <laughs> OU basketball tickets because no one's using them. <laughs> That's somewhat of a fact. Please, please take them or we'll have to take them to the recycle center. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, the Hazelwood stuff is just, and, and Josh, Bob, you guys can kind of talk about you know, how it started kind of snowballing for you guys, too. Um, and, and like I said, there's nothing decided yet. And it's still, we're still looking for more concrete information all the time, but. I mean, you guys just kind of go over 
you know how you how you saw that developing and where it is now. Josh, I think you heard more than me, so I'm just going to go first. For me, it was when Justin Fields announced he was going to transfer from Georgia, and all of a sudden this package deal got thrown in. Checked in with a couple sources in the state of Georgia that made it sound like that's not the craziest idea they've ever heard. That at least they're going to get one or maybe even both of them by the time it's all said and done. Uh I think there's a decent possibility, Bob, that we might have talked to someone similar just hearing what you're saying there. But I I do think that, you know, like at first it was, I won't lie, it was like a package deal. Like, oh, you fans, like you're just going crazy. Like be excited that you've got a good chance at Justin Fields. Like don't get greedy. But then I started talking to people and I'm like, oh, okay, maybe I was the one not giving OU enough credit. And so you start talking to people and to me – at that point in the game, when people start saying a lot, generally it's a red flag to me. I'm like, they don't really, they don't either they don't know or they're trying to make themselves feel better about where they stand. I was getting a lot of, I can't say anything. I can't talk about that. I can't get into that. If you've lost the kid, why would it matter? Why, why would it be an issue at all? And so... Then I start digging around, and you just start seeing these weird things. And I don't know if we want to go into what we were discussing on Twitter. Um, There were some pictures that were weird. You would see graphics that looked like they were either incomplete or that OU was already ready for something that maybe either hadn't happened or had happened but wasn't ready for press. Like There was just a lot of stuff that you were like, "I I don't know what to make of that just yet. So... Let me let me throw something in on that. Um, like mm-hmm. okay, so like there's to me you can almost see it how you wanted to see it. Like if I were a Georgia or a Miami fan, and I and I would have seen that OU had some graphic made up of Jaden Hazelwood on their website, then they would have been like, well, they're not really that involved. If they think that maybe he would have signed that day, they didn't really know what was sure. going on with yeah. him. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. like it was just it was hoping against hope. But, I mean, you have to think that whoever he did sign with yesterday, if he did, according to his father or uncle or whatever, um, that they would have had to have been in on it. I mean, you can't just do this and not have the school that you're signing with be in. But there's also the possibility, like, oh, you might have hoped that they could have talked him into announcing yesterday. That, yep. That's what I thought. And, again, this goes about his – the theory about Hazelwood has been – He's signing multiple financial aid agreements so that mm-hmm. all three schools think they're still in the running. And then he was going to announce at the All-Star game, which, by the way, Josh, what the heck is the name of this game now? It's just like the All-American <laughs> game or something. Like it's Because all the jerseys just say All-American. Since like, the U.S. Army is no longer a yeah, part of it. Yeah, we've got to come up with some short <laughs> so I don't know what it. it. I don't is. know what it is yet. But, yeah. And – Anyway, that was how it was supposed to go down. I don't know if that's exactly what transpired yesterday, though. You know, so I guess we can kind of, you know, like you said earlier, Bob, we can kind of look at a timeline. So we've got a set of eyes from Lincoln that are unaccounted for. I think we're all pretty confident that it's the Tuesday night eyes that we don't. That's my theory. That's my theory. I know I've had had a back and forth today on the board with people, and I understand if they don't agree. That's how I viewed it, though. That that's I'm with you. Like just knowing the stuff I know, and I I don't want anybody to get the impression that like I know everything else, and I just don't know that. There are some things that I'm not sure about, but just connecting the dots exactly. that I do have, that's the one I can't account for. And I uh, so like you do that, and then you look at the tweet from his dad where he tweeted out the emoji of signing a pen to paper and a check mark. And it's the only thing he said. He didn't say anything else. There was no context to it. It it could have been something not related to recruiting, but the timing was really unusual. Um, It would be really odd that on that day he tweeted that out and is completely unaware of what that would mean. Um, I I got a DM from someone yesterday who I've known for a long time and that knows his grandmother. Jaden Hazelwood's grandmother. Okay. Yep. They will not tell her his grandmother where he's going. 
She got a she, she got a big mouth. She got a big, got mouth. A big yeah. mouth. She on like, the message uh, boards. You can't tell. She's on the rivals main board. <laughs> you can't tell Mimi. You can't tell her nothing. We always knew you couldn't tell Mimi anything. <laughs> and that's crazy. Go, Granny Hazelwood. And, uh, she ain't keeping a secret. Well, th- that's the thing though. It's like you tell one person, that's getting out. It's and gonna get in out. In fact, it's gonna be the worst kept secret by January fifth, wherever he goes. I think. Even it's if just it is like Nick Oklahoma. Benito. Well, Nick Benito, right. his his came out, but it's kind of like everybody just tried to play him the courtesy of not pretending like they knew that well, he and, signed and with Oklahoma. Let's be honest. Hell, we did. This is going to sound harsh, right? But Benito doesn't match up in stature, oh, no. right? Uh, to what Benito's I know. not I the know. number four stars. player in the yeah. country. I mean, I don't want to be mean, but I mean that's going to be realistic part of this. Yep. Uh, but you know, the the flip side of it is, and. <laughs> We had a publisher on the Rivals Network learn this with Chris Steele earlier this year. You go burning a big time guy, every guy sees that. Yep. And then you lose that ability to develop future relationships. So I can flat out tell you when I have full confirmation, I'm not going to run that. <laughs> I'm not doing it. And I, I mean, I hate that that's the world we live in, but. What do I pay you ten dollars a month for then? I exactly. I mean, it's part of the job. It, it's that's one of the toughest balancing acts. Because I know people pay f- to read what I know and want to know all that I know, but I can't get you information down the line if I'm burning people now. And that, so y- you just have to kind of deal with that balance sometimes. Sometimes mm-hmm. people have to use critical reading too. Sure. Like, read between the lines with us. You're you can, good. You can basically, you, you don't have you to be told what, he's committing to this school. Like, you, if you, can you tell read what between the lines. Pod thinks. Right. Yeah. Like, I, I think you can tell what our impression is. Yeah. Listen to what we're saying. Say we're not it. saying. We're not saying. Oh, don't worry about that one. Yeah. That's not what we're saying. Like, we like we are with Steele. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Chris Steele was my number one unfollow of of signing day. <laughs> so I, he got unfollowed like three days before signing day because I'm like, this is just not happening anymore. And, and then uh, going back to Carrie with the graphic design, I for, I don't remember our message board reader who did a tremendous job of finding every single album cover that OU I think it was did. Rufus. It might have been yeah, that sounds right. I think it started with an R. But I mean you had Chris Steele, you had Jordan Battle. Like it's I really good digging to find that. I'm not smart enough to figure out those those uh, codes, but that gave you a better impression not only of who they thought maybe could have happened yesterday, but who they might be looking for in January and things of that nature. Who's still realistically still on their board. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Josh. Uh, you know, I thought, like I said, I, I thought, A, I, I guess we should probably talk a little bit about the like how they did it themselves. I thought it was awesome. Carrie, as we all know, was a little scarred by it. Um, <laughs> I just, but I mean, I thought it was a really cool idea. I thought it was have... a really unique thing. It was damn sure. But did you see what Clemson did? No. The Grinch who the Grinch. tried to steal Christmas. Yes. Or signing day. Who tried to steal signing the Grinch day? Grinch, who tried to steal signing day. Was it good? It was a stu- no, it was awful. Like, they had this guy running around in a Grinch mask, and, like, he clearly wasn't moving his mouth. It was just, like, a voiceover. That and, seems like, like a Davo it, operation. It was so <laughs> bad. So, so bad. Um, Do you see yeah. what Dabo said today? Sorry. Sorry. To, oh, no, sorry no, no. Go, try- ahead, go ahead. Bob. He talked about no spring official visits at Clemson. They're not going to do any? We'll see how that works out. <laughs> hmm. Now the the, yeah. the thing the only thing that I was upset about with OU is that they should have at least called me and said, "Hey, will you teach our students how to how handle to vinyl? <laughs> like you don't just put your hand all the way around it. That's just the huge guest room records though. That's that was cool. Pretty I was, cool. I was glad that they got that is, some love. I, I had to recalibrate for a minute. That's 1,000% the nerdiest thing ever said on this podcast about how to handle a vinyl. It's true, though. I mean, you don't have to be an expert. Those things cost $30, Like eh? Harry, but you know how they're holding. That doesn't make sense. Nope. I'm not judging. This is, a hate, judge, this is a judge-free zone. You hate zone. music? You don't, we all know that? You don't care a, about it's it? It's a judge-free zone. You're not a music person. I get that. That's why when I rent cars, I make sure we have Sirius so we can all listen to sports. We're good. Just let me have my thing. Let me have my I, anger. I am. That's what I'm saying. That's it's what not I'm really saying. anger. I mean, the the 
We have to talk about the idiot guy on Twitter, though. Oh, Andy Hutchins. <laughs> oh, the oh hottest take God. of the century. <laughs> hottest take of the century. Who Jesus basically Christ. said that OU was. Um, what was his point? Know. What was what was even his, his point, point was of the... that they were like cultivating a rape culture or something? I think that's that's, what, uh, that's how what I he read was it. Trying to yes, say. that's exactly because how I read it. A couple it. of girls who are clearly pretty are completely respectably clad and were carrying around an album. Jesus Christ! Like it's not like they were in bikinis. That would have been kind you of know, cool though if they were. I would have been fine with that. I'm not acting above it, but still, like to make that point, you need some ammunition and. And you, need, and you need not to have half of the videos featuring be, guys. Yes, be different settings with different people. Correct. Oh, okay, I found it. It, it was uh, looking forward to college football recruiting folks praising Oklahoma for its, quote, creative videos of attractive young women playing records of signees highlights without engaging the subtext at all. <laughs> Andy yeah. Hutchins. What, that listening to records leads to rape? I don't even, like, what a, what a terrible take. I, I would say the records could be more responsible for the rape than the girls that are, like I said, completely respectably dressed. Maybe the music has... Maybe that's what he was getting at. The records make people rape. Andy Hutchins' face should be... No, don't don't finish that. No. Punched. Yes. You thought oh, okay. I was going to say something else, <laughs> didn't you? I thought you were going R-word. Yeah, I might have. I was going to, but <laughs> everybody can kind of make believe it. <laughs> What's what's funny is I think social media last year probably wins because Kenny Stills, Adrian Peterson, guys like yeah, that, that was announcing cool. you is cool. But the album cover, if you're a recruit, to have that forever, yeah, it's that's I, pretty cool. I think cool. that part's cool. I thought the stuff that they did the night before, just with the former players tweeting, yes. like highlights of their college that and NFL good. and college stuff. It was yep. The whole thing is incredible in what they've done. They uh, do a great just, job. Yeah, they they do. I mean, it's it's an absolute and. It's it's kind of funny because that kind of on signing day takes, I guess, precedent over the guys that they actually. Well, not really, but in a way, it feels like it it played a huge part of it. And while it doesn't, I don't think to an extent, it's it it's just another element of what Oklahoma can offer. I guess is, is right, the way to put it. Well, you're saying like Marcus Stripling isn't signing because he's getting this video. Right, 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 right. right. I got you. But um, it, it also I, I, it also like you see like Darian Green Warren tweeting out like twenty it build, deep the it same builds, day. Like, it builds for twenty twenty. Yeah. It continually builds on each class. I would think as to as opposed to you know other programs like UCLA that still don't have a twenty twenty commitment. Well, just look in state. I mean, Oklahoma and Oklahoma State's day yesterday couldn't have been on two different ends of the spectrum as far as the celebration that was in Norman. I mean, they had a goddamn party last night as opposed to what they did in Stillwater, which was a press conference at 10.30 in the morning with their coach before everybody shitting all signed. over their... Basically shitting all over their class. Life-size cutouts, too, for OU. I, I kind of like that. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's just... It's incredible the way that they've kind of gone all in over the last couple of years, and particularly the last two years under Riley, with uh, their mentality in recruiting, and it, it's shown on the recruiting trail. I mean, they've... About to be another top 10 class, possibly top five with this one. Look, everybody knows, you know, um, Bob Stoops is my guy. He'll be my guy. But what Mike Gundy is doing right now reminds me a little bit of Bob there towards it's the end. just being defiant. just Yeah, he's being defiant against progress, against, you know, social media. Like, that's one thing that, that is the biggest difference in what Lincoln Riley brought to this program is just embracing all that stuff. Yep. If that's what it takes to get the talent, then that's what you got to do. I mean, that, that's just the the nature of it. I, I was shocked how resigned he was. I watched that clip that Carson Cunningham put up last night, and it was just, we try. We try to sign the best quarterbacks, and they go other places. So we go find the guys who fit our system best. And I'm like, I get that, like, you have to do that. You know I mean? Like, you, if you don't get the guy, you, you can't just, well, okay, this season's over. Like, I get that you have to go do that. But to just be like, yeah, they don't come here, so we don't, you know, like, how does that not piss you off? How does that not oh, bother you? Josh, it it pissed me off just watching it, and I have no connection to it. <laughs> yep. It's like, how could you sit there and say that? I mean, that at no point is that good for recruiting. Yep. For, for, for hey, now, for the future? for if, Because if you're I, even running down the guys you got. Yes. Like, they weren't really the guys we wanted, but they're if, the guys that would come. If I didn't know any better, I would think he's trying to get himself fired. Some um, people believe that. That he's trying to get himself fired? 
Yeah. Carrie, He's... I wanted to – you brought up UCLA. I, I saw a tweet about an hour ago <laughs> that I knew you were going to love. It's from SB Nation Recruiting. It's a guy named uh, Bud uh, Fisher. I can't remember his last name. Fun, good guy, really follows it closely. He goes, in, in October, I wondered what in the hell UCLA was doing under Chip Kelly on the recruiting trail. Now I know. Number one, being too selective. Number two, not being good at actually recruiting the few players it did <laughs> offer. <laughs> like that. I mean, they there were three school. Excuse me, yeah, three schools in the Power Five that had under a hundred that were ranked lower than UCLA oh, okay. in the recruiting. How does that happen at UCLA? Like, I don't. I get what UCLA is not a football school. It's second in its own city, but you're in Los Angeles. If you're getting the second best group in Los Angeles, you should be a top twenty class. That's all you got to do. See, I think didn't they they offered like eighty kids total, right? That yeah. that's just strange. That's just not how you're gonna win. And, and you know, and that was what everybody said about Chip at Oregon is he didn't like to recruit, and that's why he wanted to go to the NFL. He didn't have to do that anymore, and that's fine if that's what you want to be as a head coach. You can succeed that way, but get a staff that recruits their ass off. Like you've got to compensate. You can't just say, "Well, we're all gonna be great evaluators and great developers of talent." Like. Okay, cool. You're going to play with one arm tied behind your back your entire career? Fine. And, you're, you're going to lose a lot of games that way. And and that's the reason why we keep stressing why we believe Lincoln Riley is staying. He loves this too much. It's not the well, bane of his existence. He enjoys this. Watch that Cradell reaction and exactly. tell me that's a guy ready to go to the NFL. That was, he that he was the, loves I think that was stuff. the first thing that everybody thought. When you watch that video, it's like, that's a guy that... Seems pretty invested in what he's doing. I guess would be the best way to say it, guys. And I don't even. I don't think that. I somewhat think it was an act, maybe. But sure. I think that a, a staged, lot of it, you could say, staged maybe. would probably bit, be yeah. better. But I definitely think that that was uh, genuine in a way, in the way that he reacted. And you see how I'm, important oh, like Drew, ahead. Drew Hill, and Chip Viney are. They're in the room with mm-hmm. with Lincoln. I mean, those guys just put in so many for sure. hours. For sure, I want to know happen. how much Bob Diaco shit on their chances to sign Cradell. Yeah, that was right? weird. That wasn't how <laughs> weird was that? That's exactly what I was trying to get to. Thank that you. We, uh, yes, Kish kept saying it. I was like, "What is that? You're out, right? Yeah, yep." <laughs> Diaco's out. Diaco's <laughs> out. And I was like, what? Is that a reference to he's fired. literally everybody on earth think he's not going to keep the job? Maybe Diaco had it? been in the kitchen all, all morning cooking up some uh, pasta, pasta oh. primavera or something. And uh, mm-hmm. they were just saying, oh, he's out of the kitchen. Diaco was the guy <laughs> that maybe was going to pop out. the wine. And not that there's he anything wrong with that. It's, 20, it's 2018. There's nothing wrong with that. Diaco was the guy opening the wine for the celebration. He, he had picked the bottles. He knew what he wanted. That was his job, and so Diaco got to come out and give everybody their wine so they could start enjoying. Perhaps. To start the party. Literally turned water into wine. Maybe. That would be interesting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, you know where somewhere if that— Bob uh, Diaco started turning water into wine. Oh, he's winning the national championship this year. You know who won't be uh, in Miami? Chip Kelly. Uh, but we will be. And a big part of that is going to be thanks to Lexus. <laughs> That's the best segue I've ever heard. There you go. Uh, thanks to Lexus, Eskridge Lexus. They're starting, uh, they've started their December to Remember uh, event. So now through the end of December, it's the best time of the year for you to buy a Lexus. I should probably buy one of those because um, they're such a great sponsor. But uh, you'll be seeing uh, Red Bow December to Remember commercials all over TV. You're seeing them now. I mean, you can't. You can't not see them. They they do a lot of sports uh, advertised on ESPN, so you see that all the time. But it's really the best time of the year to buy a car. They've got all the new 2019s out with special holiday incentives, uh, and that's on top of the special Sooner Scoop price that you'll receive when you mention that you're an unofficial 40 uh, or a post-game podcast listener. And, and thanks to Lexus, you guys are going to get a lot of podcasts when we go down to Miami because pretty much every day... Uh, if it's not Eddie, Bob, and I, it'll be me and Eddie kind of giving you at least a 30-minute recap of what's going on because starting on the 25th, 20, yeah, 25th. The night of the 25th. Uh, so the 26th will be the first full day. They'll have offensive and defensive coordinators and select players prep, having their own press conferences and then media day on the 27th. Then the coaches will have their press conference on the 28th. Then they'll play a football game on the 29th. So, 
It's going to be wall to wall podcast action, wall to wall sooner scoop uh, website action. What we're saying is there's going to be a ton of shit coming from Miami, and we'll a ton we'll, of coverage. We'll get the first 15 minutes of practice on what the 26th and the 27th, so maybe we'll be able to see Marquise Brown, Justin Broyles, Jordan Parker, which guys uh, of that nature. Lincoln Riley gave no indication. The shortest yesterday of answer Brown. of the day was about Brown. <laughs> I think at I this point took, he wants to just screw with no, Alabama. He, the the way that he said it, I was like, he's fucking with everybody. Yeah, like it, it was almost like a same pre, thing too. It was almost premeditated. Yeah, I mean, he's I, even if he, even if he's out there practicing, even if he's a hundred percent, I fully expect Lincoln Riley to be like, mm, we'll see. So I thought it was pretty funny. Uh, so back to uh, signing day yesterday, uh, Lincoln Riley did speak to the media. After it was all over with, um, I know, Bob, you've got your uh, take three already up on the site, uh, so people can check that out. But, Eddie, let's start with you. Kind of what were your biggest impressions or takeaways from, from his press conference? I thought it was pretty telling that he, uh, I mean, pretty bluntly said that he couldn't remember them ever closing like they did. And obviously, uh, they got, you know, with Stripling and then Cradell yesterday, uh, the possible, you know, I guess Hazelwood news that's out there. Uh I left there thinking that not only is Oklahoma kind of an it program right now, but they just need a they need a win against Alabama, I think, to legitimize themselves as kind of a top a top of the mountain or next to Alabama. I'm not to say that they're gonna win the national title or to be a, a you know, start a dynasty like Alabama has had the last, you know, five, six years. It just feels like they're starting to maybe turn that corner that everybody has been hoping that they do, if you will. I, and I, I you know, obviously the defense coordinator hire is going to be interesting, uh, but you know, you look back at and he mentioned it yesterday, talking about the job that Calvin Thibodeau did closing. Yeah, that was yep. really the, the the two groups that they have in the defensive tackle groups, uh, or the two defensive tackle classes over the last two years, pretty good. I mean. There is no reason why they shouldn't take that next step that everybody has wanted them to make. If if Michael Thompson can fully recover, it's and too bad he become that ACL. guy because I know a lot of people were saying the defensive end class is phenomenal and it is Stripling Hicks. But they look at just Derek Green, just like just Derek Green. Like where's the help with the tackle spot? Well, if you get Thompson playing at a high level, then you're doing just fine. Yeah, and but I. Maybe the biggest takeaway that I I took from yesterday was the fact that offensively everybody knows the names out there. It could be one of the best offensive groups that they've ever put together mm-hmm. in, a, in a recruiting class. But maybe we're not talking about the defensive side of the ball enough and what they were able to, I don't want to say scrape together, but put together at the end there, especially with Cradell and Stripling. Two four-stars the final kind of, day. It I puts mean, them over the top a little without bit. Without a I defensive mean, coordinator. I think that defensive back group, Josh, pretty damn good, isn't it? I think it might be the highlight of the class. And I, and that's with, you know, I've been very open with how well I thought Calvin Thibodeau's done, but you, you covered a lot of that. I mean, you look at Woody Washington, maybe the best player in Tennessee, Jaden Davis, a top flight corner from St. Thomas Aquinas, uh, Jeremiah Cradell, one of the top DBs in the entire West Coast, uh, Jamal Morris, who I, I think is a guy that, as much as being a good player, he's a locker room guy that's going to, like there, there will be, He'll be a leader for that group. Now, I think Jaden Davis also falls into that kind of role. He's kind of got that, uh, I, don't, I don't know the right way to say it, like an attitude about him that I think guys will like. Um, so, and, and Tidy Armin, like I said, I, it'll be interesting to see how he fits in with everything because he's a late addition. They don't know him like a lot of the other guys do, or, you know, like a lot of the other classes connected. He's not there yet. But I, I think that defensive back group's really good, and I think in both the case of Cradell and Washington, it wouldn't shock me for a minute if one or the other, or maybe even both, are starting next year. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, just overall, I mean, and, and not just to land those guys, but man, you got to give them some credit for holding that class together. And, and that was the, that's probably like the third tier of, yeah. of what I took out of yesterday was just the fact that, I mean, there were... It kind of ballsy in a way to fire Mike in the middle of the season and then not really necessarily. And th- I think that could be why you saw Crudell and the way that he acted after the c- 
commitment and being excited about it was I think he kind of took it on a, upon himself to be the, I don't know, the, like the guy out in front of everything that said, you know, I'm going to keep this ship moving in the right direction. And if it if I have to go out and recruit the defensive guys, it's what I'm going to do. Well, and I think you look at it, Josh, one of the things that, that Lincoln probably did more successful than anything was not just recruit the kids, but recruit the parents. I mean, like Kelvin Hicks, he wasn't going anywhere. Marcus Hicks wasn't going anywhere. I mean, they had him. And he was even realistic about the struggles that they had defensively. And I think you look at the Roberson family, how much they seem to love Oklahoma and love Lincoln Riley. And uh, it's just, and I don't know that it was that way for e every single recruit, but they had those guys. I mean, they, they, they closed. Uh, I, like I said, I, I think when you look at what they've done defensively, I, and I, I, we've been talking about this for three or four weeks. I know kind of as signing day approaches, it becomes a story for everyone else, but we've been talking about this for a while. What OU's done is just, it's unbelievable. Like, I, I can't believe there was not more attrition. I don't understand it. I, I think Lincoln Riley is obviously the the huge part of that, but you have to give credit to Kerry Cooks and, Tim Kish and, and Calvin Thibodeau, and they've done all this while not really knowing their future, guys. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, that that only adds an extra degree to everything. So, like I said, I I think if OU fans, you know, if I, I think we all feel like there's probably still some more changes. I think it's probably inevitable. But like, if anything, these guys, I hope OU fans would kind of watch them go off and be like, they could have mailed it in and they didn't do it. They, these guys brought in some really good talent. I at linebacker, I get it. I having one guy and having that be a guy that's kind of a workman like type linebacker, it isn't really that exciting. I understand if people are a little I don't want like not mad, but just kind of confused about how that played out. I understand that. But along the defensive line and in the secondary, those are as good a classes. I probably last year's defensive line group was better, but that was a almost historically good defensive line group for Oklahoma. Um, but that secondary group is as good as OU signed in a decade or more. So that's a really good group. And we'll see what plays out with, you know, who those guys end up playing for. But the players, and I talked to Jamal Morris about it yesterday, he trusts Lincoln Riley. I talked to Marcus Stripling's dad about it, and they were like, we just believe that whatever Coach Riley do, does, that'll be good for us. That's what's that's what we're buying into. And they love Calvin Thibodeau, but they believe in Lincoln Riley that he's going to make the right choices to make everything turn out. And I would say throughout this process, what we learned or what Lincoln said, and, and we've kind of said this, but we haven't said it, is uh, Calvin Thibodeau safe. Regardless of what happens with, with the coaching hire, I think he's going to be safe at Oklahoma. Because, and I'll say this, I do know that the people have shown interest in him so of all the coaches that are on the staff, he's a guy outside of Oklahoma that that people are interested in hiring. So, I mean, he's a he's a he has value. It would seem that he's starting to find his. Um, oh, I, would footing be the right word on the recruiting trail, Josh? I I, I mean these last two so, cycles are it's that's incredible. I'm not incredible, but he's done a really good job. He hasn't taken a bad beat since Ron Tatum's first commitment to Texas. After that, it's been win after win. I mean, Jalen Redmond, Ron Tatum, Michael Thompson. You know, you go into this year. Guys, the Ron Stokes is a good deal for Oklahoma, especially with the Imani Bledsoe situation. Mm -hmm. He he plugs into that. And I, I think that's why LeRon became an option for them is because of it. You know, I, I guess we'll talk about that a little bit. But the Imani Bledsoe going into that All-Star game, it looks like everybody's kind of conceding that he's this is probably it for him. So... They needed a guy that can help immediately. Leron Stokes is that kind of guy. And I actually have an interview I've done with him. I need to run it. I, um, amazingly, in all this signing day chaos, that didn't get done. But um, he is – they've told him he's going to do a lot of different stuff. Uh, he may he may even drop some. I mean, they're, they're going to do a bunch of stuff with him. They really think he's versatile. So that'll be – that's a guy that's interesting to watch. But, yeah, Calvin Thibodeau um, – and Kerry, I you know, after you'd kind of mentioned hearing some things, I checked around with a few people, and I, I got the impression that it was maybe multiple suitors were interested in him. So uh, there, there were there was definitely some interest, and I think 
you look at what he's done recruiting, and it's not hard to understand why. Sure. I'll just, I, get, I can give you a, kind of some hints. I won't say anything. But just think of anybody that takes over a new job in this area, this part of the country, and they need a defensive line coach and a recruiter. Because we all know that that is one of the most difficult positions to recruit, and that's why Lincoln hired two people to coach that position initially. I mean, Calvin Thibodeau is a very attractive candidate because he's had success at Kansas. And now he's having success at Oklahoma. Like, he is literally, for this region, probably one of the best candidates that they're... I mean, he's the Josh LePoy or whatever of Big 12 regions. Or who am I thinking of? Not Josh no, LePoy. No, Tosh LePoy. No, you're, Tosh right. LePoy. you're right. The Alabama D-line coach. Yeah. And now D.C. But, yeah. Uh, who was the no, guy I, at Arizona forever that uh, everybody tried to hire away? The Samoan God. guy. I don't remember. At Arizona Mike? University? Yeah. Was he there with Mike? Solovey? Yeah, I think that's who it was. Yeah, the he played for the Redskins. For, I, if that's the right Solovey. I think that's right. I think that's right. I'm going to commit to too much there. But he was at Arizona for a long time. I think he's now... Joe Solovey. He is the defensive line coach at... Oregon the State? Uh, Oregon. University of Oregon. Oregon. Okay. Oregon that's right, Colorado. because... I remember because he and Calvin were going head up for the kid out of modern day last year, the D lineman that ended up going to Oregon late, and I can't remember the kid's Shit, name. He must be good. I mean, they got Thibodeau. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, you're right. That, that's a. Uh, did you know that's the only five star that signed in the Pac-12 this year? Yeah, that's incredible. That's, I think they only signed one out of uh, the top uh, thirty players in the country, and it was Thibodeau. By the way, um, should we talk about kind of? I don't. I wouldn't say disaster, but it was a rough day for Texas yesterday. Uh, Would you go disaster? It's pretty close. I mean, <laughs> no, Noah Kane. I mean, Trey Sanders. They yeah, got spurned by both, both of your them. running backs. Now, I mean, and, and this is. I mean, and not that Texas doesn't know it, but this is the world recruiting big time guys. You're going to have days like this. You're going to have days like Oklahoma had, where it all comes up roses. And then you're going to have days where you just get it, and it, and people always like to make it some big product. Like, what did we do wrong? What did, it just, it's the stars align. Like it just all went wrong. And then you're going to have days where you lose some and you win some and it's all good. Well, to start um, off, you, 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 you went nine and four too. Yeah. I, I mean, guys, but look, you could be Texas at number eight in the country, or you could be Ohio state at 20 or USC at 21. Um, I mean, there's some big time programs would they have landed, that are way down the rivals' rankings. Would they have landed any guys if they would have won the Big Twelve championship? Like, how different do things do things are things different for Texas? Like Trey Sanders might not have flipped or something. Yeah, or do they end up landing Noah Kane if they're the Big Twelve champions? Mm-hmm. I think Noah Kane made a great choice. Penn State. Yeah, it's hard to go against what they're putting out right now. The, the only thing with them is. They've got a five star in that class at running back. Oh, they do. You know, uh, Devin Ford, a big time kid out of Virginia, and so I mean, like, but you know what? If you don't have your head up your ass, yeah, yeah. If you don't have your head up your ass, and you have two great All American running backs, they're both. I mean, Joe Mixon and 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 uh, Samaj P. Ryan coexisted just fine. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, it, it's it's the era. I'm just saying. I could also understand from a kid's perspective if he wanted to go to Texas and like their backfield situation is is not strong. No. I, mean, I I think Keontae Ingram could be a good one, but it's hard to know because that offensive lineman or that offensive line doesn't give them a lot of opportunities. But it sure doesn't do anything that that blows me away. I guess you'd say. Now, did you hear Josh that I guess some of their people were saying not not our Orange Bloods people, but I guess some. I don't know, maybe they were, that they tried to circle back around to Stevenson to get him to not sign with OU yesterday? Yeah, I think that is correct. That That's definitely the impression I have. I, I can tell you, you know, and we wrote the story already. I talked to Ramondre um, actually before he announced on, what was that, Sunday? Yeah, I think that that's right? right. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter. Earlier this week, I spoke to him a little while before he announced, and he was... I mean, it really was. He goes, I'm going to talk to Coach Riley, and if he wants me to sign early, I'm going to sign early. If he doesn't, then I'll wait until February. You know, I, I want to go to OU, and I'll do whatever, you know, he wants me to do. So he was very – as soon as he saw OU, it was done. I mean, he, I thought OU led for him. I, I, I knew OU led for him. 
but I don't think I realized how much it was just, I need to love this visit and then I'm good. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's where he was. And he loved the trip and that was all he needed. He, and for people that like to write, like, I think there's a lot of people like, Oh, he's just a, he's a stopgap guy, blah, blah. Go watch his tape from Andre Stevens is a really good football player. Um, I know some people think he's the number two junior college back in the whole country. I mean, he's a good, good player. He's not, he doesn't have home run speed. Other than that, I can't knock him for anything. He's got good vision, quick feet. He's like six foot two thirty, So he's a wrecking ball. Um, and he's not slow. He's kind of like Trey Sermon. He's probably a four, six, four, six, five kind of guy, which, I mean, there's probably 10 plays a year when that being a guy that's sub four or five is going to really make a difference. You know, it, it's, it's small and you love to have him. I get it, but he brings a lot of good stuff to the table. I think he's a really good player that probably is not going to get his due. By the way, uh, toast in this class, another segue. Uh, I want to remind you guys, uh, Coop Ale Works, great sponsor of the podcast. Uh, they are another big reason that you're going to be getting a whole bunch of podcasts down in Miami. Uh, they agreed to uh, help sponsor uh, our, uh, our mini pods down in Miami while we're there. Uh, so uh, go by, get yourself a, 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 a six-pack of Coop Ale Works. They've got uh, seven different year-round beers. Uh, they're a local craft brewery here in Oklahoma City over the last nine years. Um, but uh, you've heard us talk about you know the Horny Toe and their F5 IPA. Uh, they've got their uh, new seasonal out right now, um, which is the uh, Grand Sport Porter. Uh, is a it's a dark beer. It's a fantastic kind of a holiday beer. Uh, the spare rib uh, is is a little bit like the the F five IPA. It's a pale ale. Uh, the Saturday Siren is a uh, a pilsner. It's really good. And the DNR uh, that's uh, that one will do some damage to you. But that's a really good beer. So go, they got a lot of different kinds of beers. The, the native amber I really like, uh, and you'll find one that you like. But it's it it is. I don't want to say life changing, but it really does let you know what it's like to drink a really high quality beer because it's it's fantastic and it's local so it's uh fresh it's it's really good company go check them out they they do a great job supporting us as well uh i have exciting news you you had some i heard i had some coop ale i tried two different kinds i went with the horny toad blonde which is what i thought i was really gonna dig and i liked it it was good but the native amber yeah that was the one that i really and Tiffany did too. Tiffany drank a couple with me. We both that the native amber is where we went on that. So just a shameless. Finally, my coupe ale drought is over, and we can you, everybody at home can stop worrying about it and can sleep at night. Did you take some home with you? No, I didn't. Um, I, I was at a friend's house, and we were going after the friend's house. We were going to stay a couple of nights, or uh, I guess one night, with Tiffany's family. Tiffany's family, as we've discussed before, you know, Eddie during the wedding, um, not big on alcohol, so didn't really have anywhere to put the beer. So we uh, we, we just <laughs> left it, and it, it was given up to the beer gods. I forget, you get stuck in these dry weddings and dry mm-hmm. holiday yeah. parties. Which really fits my social lifestyle, considering I did the chat last night, you know, while drinking whiskey. It's just so, so foreign to me, that whole idea. It, <sighs> preach, preach. I don't understand it. It's it's amazing that you know they allowed Tiffany to marry me. So you know, <laughs> you had being a fool. A, they just didn't know. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I put on a good show for a while. You know, didn't let the tattoos show. You know, managed to comb my hair a few times. That kind of stuff. What happened? Then you just wake up one day and say, you know what? I'm gonna just live my life. Well, you want to talk about a soul crushing thing for him? At, literally at our wedding, and I say all this. They've like. I make them sound so much like holy roller than they are. Like, it's not like that, but it's, it's just, it's so foreign to me. I'm getting dirty looks from Tiffany, by the way, as she wraps presents. Um, it's the night of our wedding. Like I said, I, you know, and when I go places with them, I have water or whatever. I, I just, I don't drink. And not that I drink much out anyway, but I, um, the night of our wedding, we had a bartender that literally as my, if my drink got empty, he would bring me a new one. Like it mixed and made it and it was ready. Like the second changed my life. I proceeded to get exceedingly drunk on my wedding night, but <laughs> it was, it was one of the great times of my life. Cause literally it would be like a third empty. And I turned around the dude was there with another one. And that was, I never had to drink the water down. You know, I think it was rum that night. So it was, it was a good night. 
what was the let me get back to recruiting for a second um <laughs> What was the kind of big story nationally? I mean, we didn't even talk about Dax Hill yet. How weird that was. That he just flipped back to Michigan. I would say that or Sam Howell uh, flipping back, uh, flipping from Florida State to North Carolina was, was really, really big. Let's start, um, start locally then with Dax Hill. Was that more to do with Jordan Battle or did Dax Hill put the wheels in motion? I think talking to some people, it sounds like when the um, the Michigan Ohio State game went down the way it did, and Michigan just got ran out of the stadium, and it looked bad. Well, it sounds like Alabama kind of turned it into, well, you know, you can see what this is, you see what the, where they are defensively, you see where we are defensively. Plus, it looks like Jim Harbaugh is going to the NFL. Like I heard that Alabama started pushing that stuff pretty hard. And Michigan had to kind of come back and show, okay, it was a bad game. We get that. Coach isn't going anywhere. They, they really just had to make him feel like the ground was solid. Because to me, just knowing I, – I won't pretend that like Dax was a kid that I had this great relationship with, but I knew him okay. Um, he Academics were an important part to Dax Hill. And Michigan, as a decision in that regard, it matters. Yeah. And I know we talk about, oh, academics don't matter – most of the kids, I agree. It, it's a bull thing to talk about. For Dax, it's real. Like, Dax wants to get his degree. Like, th- those things matter to him um, and, and his family. Alabama, let's be real, that's a football decision. Like, you, you, you did that for football. So, him at Michigan makes more sense to me from his personal level. And I, I think, again, Michigan just had to put away the concern that Michigan was going to lose Harbaugh and Don Brown and the whole thing. And this is all still going to be here when you're here. It was. I was happy for the guy that uh, had his Dax Hill jersey made after he committed the first time. I don't know if you ever saw that. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I I just I drank up the replies after he decommitted from Michigan. Just wanted to see their angry fans, and it was glorious. And then this one guy posted, "Well, guess I shouldn't have had my Dax Hill specialty game jersey purchased." Sir, if we're being completely honest, <laughs> you should have never had it made. Yeah. Hopefully and it's he not was because young. it's not because of a I'm against anti jerseys because I've slowly come around to thinking that a good throwback jersey is a decent way to dress. Like a, a good you saw OJ something Cubs related if, you like. Didn't if you? I found an OJ Simpson jersey, I would probably buy it. Yeah. That would be pretty cool. Uh but to get a personalized jersey for an incoming recruit that's creepy. a little over the line that's creepy that's straight like, up even creepy even if you put that like behind the glass case it's still weird I mean I guess you hold on to it until they become a all American or something then you could wear it but did you know that Fanatics has a policy that uh, they won't print the last name of a current player on a jersey yeah I think I did know that I think I saw that that might have come up when uh, maybe Mayfield here yeah can't remember i i do remember seeing that though see i'd put like a i'd hang like a george brett kansas city royals jersey behind glass on the wall in the office or something that'd be cool but i'm not wearing i'm not wearing i know a lot of people that do that yeah i do the same for something oh i'm back bob is returned i I do the same for something like ernie banks or walter payton Yeah. yeah for sure just don't buy Recruit jerseys, jerseys for incoming recruits. <laughs> There's no way, no better way to out yourself as a loser. Well, that's a good 15 minute talk with Ty. We'll have that on Sooner Scoop uh, Friday morning. Oh, you, that was what it was talking to Ty DeArmond, huh? Yes. Bob double dipping, you know, whatever. But you weren't here for the pod, Bob. That's true. I didn't get to give my thoughts on signing that. My biggest thought was they signed everybody, there's no hangers on. Like last year, where you didn't know what was going on, they got every single kid, no matter what, to sign. So they that was that was committed. Yes, they don't yeah. have to worry Jan- I mean, in, Jan- in January at all. The only guy that I knew that was very open that he was concerned was EJ and Domo Ogar, and he told me, I think it was Tuesday evening. He messaged me and said, "Hey, I'm going to go ahead and sign tomorrow." Blah blah blah. So I I think just Bill Biedenboe came in, and it was the same deal, you know, kind of. 
there was a lot of, and people love to call it negative recruiting, man. It's just the job. You're, you're going to do whatever you need to, to try and win in recruiting. And I think a lot of schools and, um, I would say maybe one with a first-year head coach of a very um, passive uh, actual outgoingness. I mean, let's just call him quiet, very uh, maybe a little bit dickish, um, was one of the big parts of it that really sold EJ that Biedenboe's gone, Lincoln Riley's going to be gone, you're going to have to deal with all this. And I, I think finally he got past all that. No, you convinced him those guys aren't going anywhere they're going to get paid what they need to to stay, and everybody's going to be happy. And that's all Indo Mogar wanted to hear because he's seen what OU's offensive line is doing, and he knows how good it's been for Allen to go to OU. So I, I think that was it. And once that was done, uh, the rest of the guys just fell in place. Josh, there's only one I had a question about Ramondre Stevenson. I thought he might hold off, I thought he might visit Texas. I, you talked to him. We talked about that. Did you? Okay. You weren't here. Dang it. I you weren't even there, here. Bob. You'll have to I listen. I missed the Stevenson part. Yeah, enjoy my life. Listen to the podcast, Bob. <laughs> You'd be amazed all the things you didn't hear. Like <laughs> Tiffany literally giving me shit about the Larry Coker thing last week. So She knew and you didn't? Yeah, she was like, how did you not hear them? I was like, I didn't hear you guys say it. I didn't hear anything. But, you know, I still think you might have edited it in later. But, you know, whatever. We always say something that, you know, gets fact-checked by the listeners. For sure. Pretty much every episode. Which what was the fact check on the Boone Pickens thing? Did someone get us? Eminent domain. Eminent domain. Oh yeah, eminent domain, yeah. So uh anyway, yeah, I mean you know, Which by the way, speaking of Boone Pickens, if you had him in the twenty eighteen death pool, you're running out of time. He's gonna, like he's eleven gonna, days. They, I mean he didn't think he was gonna make it. I know, which maybe a little bit of fake news. Was he trying to drum up some uh some Crocodile tears from people. Maybe he needed to win that week's fight with Mike Gundy. Well, could have been it. Was that Eddie asking you to take it into your own hands? Uh, I I don't know. I, I kind of feel like a homicide really kind of puts <laughs> a death pool at risk of integrity. Yeah, yeah. Because in a death pool, integrity is key. You gotta right. you gotta let it run. It's it couldn't have been fake though because he sold his ranch and everything. No, yeah. I I think he was doing bad and. But I'm glad he's okay. I mean, hopefully he lives for another. Who else is going to give us stories about you know who's, who else is going to be able to fight with Mike Gundy? No, that's true. Make life interesting. It's still very true. Very true. Who's going to keep Mike Holder in power? Who's going to fire Mike Gundy when Mike Gundy's asking to be fired? Like apparently <laughs> is now. Mm-hmm. All facts. All facts. All right. Well, I mean, I think you know. From here on, is there is there anything that we want to get into as far as uh, Justin Fields? Yeah, that's what I was. I that's, mean, that's, that's really final, all there is left to, the final, to keep an eye on. Uh, yeah, he's officially in the portal. I, I mean, you know, I it's so ridiculous because you know, you one report comes out, oh, it's look out for Justin Fields and Jaden Hazelwood at Oklahoma, and then it, another next day, a newspaper guy writes, oh, sources say Ohio State's the leader for. I mean, I think you could be in a situation because he can now take official visits and stuff again. Uh, I I don't think that it's out of the question that another team enters into the fray at some point. If, can you take an official visit to a school you did the same thing during high school? I believe so. I don't. I think I, that's right. I mean, I think you can take visits to I if it's a different coach. I think. I think if it's the same coach, you can't. You can't. I actually don't. I didn't know if you could double dip. Well, you can as a JUCO guy. I don't know why it'd be any different. Well, yeah. C- Courtney Gardner couldn't. Co- that's why Courtney Gardner never en- ended up being a Sooner. Way back when. He what couldn't, do you mean? He couldn't take another official. Remember, he took the official visit, and he signed. He didn't qualify junior college. Yeah. He wanted to take another official visit, and he was told that's that's not allowed. I didn't know that, Bob. That, that is, I, I'll admit that that I was unaware of that. Yeah, well, there I don't is some. The there's other. some kind of rule. We obviously don't know what it is. <laughs> Should have brought it up. Sorry. Well, regardless, I mean, did he visit here? No, no. I'm talking about like, did he visit some of those other like Penn, like Penn State? I think the I think the biggest outlier like in all of this is what's his baseball situation. Does anybody know? 
Because if he wants to play baseball, oh, use the school they go to. He's not going to Ohio State to play baseball. They're pretty decent in baseball. Well, they were 10 years ago. I don't know what they've been doing lately. I don't think they've... I can't say that they've done much the last couple of I think seasons. OU played them in a regional in the 90s. We're, po- we're approaching 10 years, years since the 90s. I'm old. 10? Eddie. Did you say 10? What? From did you say ten from ninety nine? <laughs> yeah, from ninety nine. Eddie, you're approaching twenty years. From ninety nine. Oh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> They're like, well, they won conference in twenty sixteen. They made the NCAA tournament last year, twenty eighteen. So yeah, I guess they weren't bad. You know what's crazy is, I think this was my twentieth recruiting class as a professional. Oh, you got to retweet that. If you don't put it on social no, media, it's see, not real. You don't. No, you no, don't. no, 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 no. We, that's that's going against talk. my. Right. That's going against my creed, which is, you never no, say no, how no. long you've been doing something. Because that means you you've quit. You're living off of was it past laurels? Yep. I see that daily. Don't brag about your friends being former former players and not. Uh, mm-mm. Do people do that? I only brag uh-huh. about getting stuff right, really. That's 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 where I'm at. Well, my 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 most sure bet going right now is that Chip Kelly is going to be a failure at UCLA. That's I've been banging that drum for a while. But yeah, the Pac-12 is terrible. Just just that conference is going down the shitter. I don't know why we talk about them. Because it's so embarrassing. Because they make the Big Twelve look awesome. Yeah, Larry Scott's an idiot. Who gets paid? He gets, is it pretty safe to say to the Big Twelve is probably conference number three right now? If it's not for Clemson, the Big Twelve is firmly entrenched as one of the top three. Yeah, I don't yep. know, but yeah. Well, because other than Clemson, the ACC is a joke. Yeah, I mean a joke. Yeah, and there's no like Florida State's not coming back next year. No, they might start making moves in the right direction, but they're two or three years away. And from I'm not a buyer. Go. I'm not a buyer on, on Syracuse. Syracuse. Yeah. What do you, what I do think you need it's really hard do? for Syracuse to be really good if Penn State's really good. And Penn State's really good right now. By the way, that's, Syrac- those that's, guys. Syrac- that's Syracuse commit. Um, his signing day thing was pretty awesome. Yeah, it was great. Yes, that was. Letting the kid announce for him or whatever. Yeah. That was pretty cool. All right, well, Justin Fields. Oh mm-hmm. yeah. Is he going to be? Is he will he be the quarterback at Oklahoma at any point? Not everybody at once. <laughs> Bob's getting ready to have to run, so he should weigh in first. Yeah, go ahead, Bob. I just don't know. I mean, that's a cop out answer, but all the signs could lead up, and the dots could connect to where it makes perfect sense. But it's not as if OU's going to need him, but you sure as hell don't like walk away from him if he's really inch, you know, really wants to be a Sooner. I'll say this: Lincoln Riley was actually he got he got a chance to actually be honest about Spencer Rattler and where he is. I mean, just basically saying, I don't know if he's going to come in here and be the quarterback. I- and if you're if you're Justin Fields, why the hell would you not come to Oklahoma? Like, I don't want to be that guy. Like everybody, everybody feels like, well, oh, that's my school. I don't. You're stupid if you don't want to come here. But like literally, you've had two transfers. They won two Heisman trophies back to back. One was a baseball player. Went in the first. Like, how does OU? How is OU not the perfect fit for you? And his style of play. I think there would be a better chance that he went to OU if they knew for a fact that he could get that eligibility immediately, restored immediately. Yeah. Okay. Because I, it just. I don't know if – I think it would be a hard sell to somebody like Spencer Rattler to say, yeah, Justin Fields is coming in. You're probably not going to win the job as a freshman. I, d- I don't think Rattler will win the job in two months while he's on campus when he comes in during the summer. No, I don't believe no, that at all. No. Right. So no. I, I, think I, just, a, I think it's a mordecai Kendall uh, battle next year. I do too. In and I just I, – I don't think – Sorry, Tanner Schaefer. I, I know you're in there, but I just don't think you're going to win the job. I, I just don't think that they're going to let – I don't think Fields would come in and, and hang around for two or three years and battle with Rattler. I I think that's a hard sell for Rattler. I think that's a hard sell for Fields. 
If they knew he was going to get an immediate eligibility, though, and he could come in and play in 2019, I think pretty damn good chance he could end up in Norman. Fields could easily be one and done, though. I mean, sure. Wait, if if he. If he's not if he eligible, sat out, yeah. Yes, if he yes, sat yes, out, yes, yes. yeah. I could see him just Being playing a year and then, yes. then that being it for sure. Yes. Which maybe the, maybe you don't want that if you're OU. And how do you look at like Justin Fields? And I'm sure you know. There's obviously respect. He realizes Kyler Murray's a great player. Realizes Baker Mayfield's a great player. But you got to look at those two guys and think those are a couple of guys that if they got off the bus, no one would know that they're anybody if unless their name tags were on them. Like, mm-hmm. they're just average-looking guys. While Justin Fields is this monstrous freak of an athlete. He's more of a Cam Newton type. Yeah, like, he is – he's the prototype uh, uh, of a run-pass kind of quarterback. And he's uh, – how does it not cross your mind? Like, look what Lincoln Riley did with those guys. Think what he could do with me. Um, and and I, I realize there's ego in that because that d- downplays what Murray and Mayfield are. But – it's a it's a young high school quarterback. He's got an ego. Let's not pretend about it. So I, I, I think it makes a lot of sense. I will say to answer Eddie's initial question, if Jaden Hazelwood is in Norman next year, so will Justin Fields. That that's how I would say Justin Fields yeah. will be as well. That's mm-hmm. why I would say it. I think You're saying me, if, if Hazel- he is the secret signee with, with yeah. Oklahoma, then Fields is coming too. If Hazelwood has made that move and it churned that quickly, I've got to think there's a reason for it. Like yeah. there's, and and that's the OU is the only common ground between the two schools that everybody has talked about with those two guys. I'll, I'll put it this way: Don't you kind of have a, a if that happens, don't you have a games of Game of Thrones type scenario happening inside the OU program where you have like Theo Wees and Spencer Rattler versus Jaden Hazelwood and. Justin Fields, like the <laughs> Lannisters and the the younglings or whatever they're called, the, the wildlings. I, Cut that. How would we? I, I don't know. I, I don't know how. I guess it'd be the Starks and the Lannisters. I guess you guys would be able to tell me better, but, I mean, how close really are? Like, I think Theo and Trajan obviously have a good relationship, but how close sure. are they really to Spencer Rattler? I think they've become. They've become close. Beca- have they? I think yeah. the opening kind of did that. The op- And the fact, I mean... Spencer and Trajan sort of spearheaded this entire class. Those, I mean, Spencer and Austin were the first two, then Trajan, and then they just kept bringing in everybody else. I think you have to develop a tight bond when you go through an 18-month process like that. I mean, they're close. I don't think it's like Jaden and Justin who've probably known each other for five, six years. Yeah. I mean, it's a little different, but yeah. uh, you know, if that's what you're getting at. But, I mean, there's no question. They're, they're close. Well, it'd be interesting. I I do think if even if they were out on the Justin Field sweepstakes, I think it's pretty safe to say that I think Lincoln Riley wants a placeholder, if you will, whether that be yeah. grad transfer or getting somebody in here for a year. I don't know. It, it just kind of you wonder if he wants somebody with a little bit of experience coming in. If the oh shit, Austin Kendall's not good. Oh shit, Tanner Mordecai is not good. Oh shit, Spencer Rattler's not ready. Type what if thing. Lincoln Riley becomes the first coach to successfully um play two quarterbacks at one I mean at the same time? Well when that like, was is being... that the next level of Lincoln Riley's genius? It's often forgot about that people around here thought OU was in a bad situation at quarterback because they hadn't named anybody at the beginning of August. We were stupid. Oh boy. The Guys, the, the theory that I think is interesting when you look at this Justin Fields thing is everyone's been waiting for a while for Lincoln Riley to offer that 2020 quarterback that made sense. They've offered Chandler Morris. Does, right. Everybody expects he's going to Arkansas with his dad. Like, and that makes sense. That There's not the 20. I mean, there's still talk with OU and Bryce Young. Um, but with Cliff Kingsbury now at USC, I mean, you've got to think Bryce Young feels better about that situation than he did a month ago. The fields thing almost makes sense because I've heard stuff, and I, I put it in one of our one of the notes threads from the weekend, that there was a some degree of overture, and there was some knowledge from Oklahoma that this thing with fields was a possibility over a month ago. Well, if that's a possibility, and you think like there's a good chance, and you're talking about a prodigious level of talent at quarterback that maybe Oklahoma 
hasn't ever signed. I mean, that, that's how Fields is viewed by some. I mean, we're talking about a guy that just is a historic talent. And if that's the case, then maybe you say, we're going to wait. We're, we can hold off on this for another month, and we'll see what happens with Justin Fields. And then from there, we'll make decisions of what we want to do in 2020. So, like I said, it's a little, you know, this whole pod, I think, has been a little bit conspiracy, especially over uh, prospects in the state of Georgia. But I think it's worth considering because, like I said, it's been very, um, it's been surprising to me how little movement I've seen in 2020 from Oklahoma at quarterback. I just see, like, uh, you know, now that the Justin Fields stuff is here, I just see Jalen Hurts, like the uh, Homer Simpson meme, just kind of fading back into the bushes. Like, uh, okay, I won't be going to Oklahoma. Who's doing that? Jalen Hurts. Hurts. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oklahoma's looking for a quarterback. (laughs) I mean, they they should have told him, hey, we'll put you on the Jalen Hurd package. You can be a running back receiver for us. We can do that. He'll end up at TCU. Hurts? Yeah. Wouldn't it be bad? That's my guess. Wouldn't it be a bad place? Where did Kelly Bryan end up? Arkansas? Missouri. 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 Just and like then Sean Robinson. Sean ended Robinson. Up in Missouri. Yep. I guess Sean Robinson has to sit out next year. Yeah. Right. So that makes sense. Well, it's two quarterbacks that can run but can't throw. Well, well, I mean. I don't even know if Robinson can run. I should say, Robinson's the second best passer out of that group, which is scary to think about. He's awful. Jalen Hurts has completed passes in important games, at least. Yeah. I mean, well, maybe no, they weren't Kelly pretty, Bryant but... has completed passes. Oh, you're talking about – you're saying Robinson's I'm sorry. worse I'm sorry. than Hurts? I'm sorry. Hertz? I said Jalen Hurts, and I confused it. Kelly Bryant's still a better passer than John Robinson. Oh, I, I agree. I agree. My bad. All right. Um, I said, well, there's one other thing I was going to bring for Bob. Bob, is there you're, – you're gesturing. I, there was one other thing I wanted to bring up, but I don't know. That's it, I guess. I got nothing. I got no voice either. Been yelling at Ed Orgeron. Eddie, any final business from you? No. I'm pretty tired. I can tell. So tired you, from yesterday. You, you've you've yep. hit the wall. I'm drained. I right. think we've all kind of hit the wall. Ready? Yeah. I, hit Miami I, and start talking to players again. I don't that'll think... be that'll be un, a unique experience. I might have to introduce myself to each player that we talk to, see if they remember me. <laughs> Do you know me you from get Twitter? Video of that. I mean, it, do you listen it, to podcasts? Alabama has had Alabama media talks to the team almost every day. They fill they go to go out and film practice and stuff. Just just think about that until the next pod. Nick Saban has a better practice policy right now. Yeah, they a lot better. And that's well, my Nick top. Saban's super media friendly. We've all known that. Yeah. Look, we covered the Sugar Bowl. Nick Saban wasn't nearly the asshole he's made out to be in person. I thought he was kind of delightful in person. It it reminded me a lot of Bob. Like, you get the impression that if you just watch his Bob's press conferences, you kind of think Bob's a dick. Yeah. And it's the same way with Saban, but when you see him in person, it was like he cracked a joke about, uh, you know, he could tell looking out that we'd all had a rough night the night before. I was like, well, yeah, Nick. It was New Year's <laughs> Eve. And I'm Eddie. God, you know, Nick's stuff. like, you go out on New Year's Eve? Is that like a thing? Is that what most people do? Yeah, I, I didn't even know that. Kind of like Belichick's <laughs> quote last week, he hates Christmas because it comes at a rough time, right, in the middle of football season. <laughs> yeah, that was the most Bill Belichick <laughs> quote of all time. People, I knew I hated that bastard, but it's now confirmed. I didn't see that live. War, war Bill. War on Christmas. <laughs> did people Did people laugh or yeah, cringe? Yeah. Or, oh, no, okay. I think everybody it's, laughed. It's laugh. he, he even smirked, I think. Yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, guys. Uh, hey, great job yesterday. Uh, fantastic. Uh, a lot of work goes into signing days. A lot of long hours. So I uh, hope you guys get, get recharged a little bit, but we'll still keep producing on the site. And uh, thanks, you guys, for listening in. Uh, remember, we got that Cyber 99 Cyber Deal going on right now. Go to the website. It's right there on the top. It says Cyber Deal, uh, Cyber Monday Deal. We're still running it, but it is... Literally, I would say less than 48 hours away from being gone. So uh, if you want to get on the site, you just pay $100 for an annual subscription. You get $100 back in, in gear. That's actually $99. But, um, so it basically pays for it, and you get 
you know, some Sooner gear. So uh, go check it out. Go sign up. Appreciate everyone that's taken advantage of that so far. But thanks to Josh. Thanks to, I'll say Bob second since it's a recruiting edition. Thanks to Eddie. I'm Kerry Murdoch, and we'll see you guys next week from Miami, of all places, right here on the Unofficial 40. And don't forget, subscribe to the Sooner Scoop postgame podcast on iTunes or your podcast provider where we'll be putting uh, our daily 30-minute podcast as well. So see you guys next week from Miami. I'm sorry. Josh, remind me what a bastard I am. We want to wish everybody out there a Merry Christmas, unless you're satanic. Or Jewish. Or Jewish. Happy Happy holidays. holidays. Is it Hanukkah over? I don't know. I know there's eight days of Hanukkah. Yeah, it's over. Oh, sure 12. Over. Is there 12 days of Hanukkah? Eight. Eight crazy eight nights. Eight crazy nights. Oh, so happy Hanukkah, right. Adam Sandler. So, yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying time with your family. I wish Jews are on the team. If your kids are oh, at home. <laughs> That's a hard J. That's not okay. Uh, I was, that, I was, was always surprised. I was always surprised that. I wasn't Jewish? You could you kind of pass as Jewish, yeah. You could. Um, what's because you're funny? Uh, uh, definitely not because I'm rich. I was surprised Tyler Neal wasn't Jewish. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> Tyler, listener of the pod. Yeah, he is. That. Mm-hmm. that fro was very Jewish. It was a little bit. I miss that yeah. fro, man. That was such a good fro. We have a uh, poster of that, like that, that, like that twenty. I don't know what team that would have been. Uh, like up in the franchise studios, uh-huh. I just look at it every day. I'm like, man, <laughs> those were the days. All right, but Merry Christmas to you guys and your families. Hope you have a great one. Uh, spending time with them, opening presents, buying presents, whatever you got to do. Uh, so thank you, and thanks to Josh for reminding me to not be a bastard and to wish everybody Merry Christmas. So we'll see you guys next week uh, celebrating Christmas from Miami with you guys. Uh, until then, see you guys. <laughs>